Hello and welcome to episode 4 of our rating climb series on Lee Chess. We're currently on 1219 rating. And um, yeah, let's jump straight into this. Let's get a bit of music going. Hopefully that's a good volume for you guys. We'll see if our opponent actually moves or not. Maybe he's scared of our provisional rating. He knows. He knows we're not really 1219. Oh no, no okay, he goes for it. Alright, let's play. Let's play Knight F3. I never play Knight F3. Okay, the perk. Um Okay. I watched a recent Naraditsky video recommending Bishop C4 rather than D4 straight away. Okay, that's a weird move. Rose is a take back. Okay, I guess he meant to play a6. Yeah, okay. Alright, that makes a bit more sense going for b5. But I think we're just going to castle. D d4 is still obviously on the cards. b5 doesn't stop that. And if b5, bishop back, bishop here targeting the pawn, we probably still play d4. Okay. Well, alright, here's a nice little principle for you guys. <clears throat> Our opponent has just made four pawn moves in a row. We've made one pawn move, and we've made two moves developing pieces, and a fourth move to get our rook ready. So our opponent has no pieces out, so we want to open the board ASAP because our pieces are much better prepared for the opening of the board. And I'm gonna try and give away another pawn to like increase the leading development that we have um, because I think if he takes he's completely lost because he just has no pieces out yeah there's no way he can do this our queen has access to some great squares c6 okay now what if we go queen b3 just attacking f7 ready to bring the rook into the game this is quite similar to a smith mora gambit um, where in the Sicilian play d4 takes c3 takes and knight takes kind of get similar positions in the smith mora the queen tends to go to e2 whoa what <laughs> what Okay, well, we'll take the pawn. We're threatening the knight. Because if rook takes, queen takes. And here, I think the obvious move is e5. Why is that obvious? Because our opponent's king is in the center. And if we play e5, we force either his pawn to capture or his knight to move somewhere, say, d7. So e5, knight d7, because we're attacking it, and then we take a pawn, right? So we're forcing the files to open up, and then our rook can get involved on either the e or the d file. So e5 is a very obvious move. Um, so he takes, we're going to take back, threatening knight g6 check, picking up a rook, obviously attacking the king. We're very close to checkmate there. Um... Fortunately for our opponent, his bishop is controlling the e6 square, so we can't make use of it as of yet. But if the king goes to d7, that will be cut off. And in the same sense, if the knight goes to d7, this control is cut off, and queen e6 is checkmate. So that was a very quick game. Um, we very quickly punished our opponent for playing four pawn moves in a row. You can't get away with that, and you especially can't get away with taking the second pawn here and just giving us all the open lines for our pieces. And then c6, another pawn move. Here he should probably just play something like bishop e7, knight f bishop e7, knight f6, and castle. But yeah, you just can't get away with that. You really can't, especially if you're playing against an opponent who knows what he's doing. I mean. I'm not claiming to be a 
chess genius or anything, but certainly a lot higher rated than this guy. You know, I'm rated around 2000 um, on Lee Chess, like 2200 ish. So, you know, five pawn moves in a row. Actually, considering the pawn captures, right? We count our opponent's moves. So, one pawn move, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then he moves the king. Seven pawn moves in a row. You can't do that. You cannot do that. Develop your pieces. It really is that simple. Um, I think we'll play another game because that was very short. Short and sweet, but um, demonstrates how important it is to get your pieces out ASAP. So our next opponent's a bit higher rated. Plays e4. We're going to go for g6. Play a modern. Play a modern. So the idea is that you don't put pawns in the center immediately. You kind of fight for the control of the center from a distance with your pieces and eventually throw your pawns into the action. So here, threatens checkmate. If we play knight f6 blocking the queen's attack, then e5 could be a bit scary because if our knight moves, then it's checkmate. We might have d5 in that position, but there's no need to complicate it. E6 just blocks the diagonal. Makes our life very easy. That gives us a pawn. Is it dangerous to take the pawn? I don't think so. I do not think it is. Our dark squares are defended. The bishop can't go to h6 so we control it. And here we just drop the bishop back. So, you know, in this game... Our opponent has gone for quick development and tried to sacrifice a pawn for that development. But it doesn't have the same bite because we're actually getting our pieces out and we're bringing our pawns forward in a more sophisticated way where we're actually blocking lines of attack. And the way our opponent's developing, you know, th there's no need to bring the queen out so early. We're going to play knight c6 and threaten knight to e5, forking the queen and the bishop. The queen can drop back to defend the bishop, but we're very happy if we can get rid of it, because effectively it is white's only good piece. Um, and typically, bishops are better than knights. Um, and my idea would probably be to fianchetto this light squared bishop and really go for the, like, approach controlling the center from a distance with two fianchettoed bishops um, well we're going to go for our plan and this also massively weakens c3 now we couldn't take it on the previous move because the queen was defending it now if he takes the queen the queen maintains her guard of the pawn we have the interesting move queen to g5, attacking g2. It does hang c7 though, and I don't see a need to allow that. I think I'd like to start with knight e7, just to castle. But d5 is also tempting. d5, pawn takes, queen takes, queen takes c7. And then queen takes here, we win a rook. So we can force the queens off the board. The E kind of has to take us. Or let us take him. But we probably won't take him. Um, because it helps his knight get into the game. And here our opponent just blunders the G2 pawn. Which is kind of difficult to see because you see, you see the queen come out. You see the queen attack your queen. My opponent's thinking, okay, if he takes me, I'm going to take back with the knight and get some nice development. It's, it's kind of difficult to see this second threat. Now, our opponent can play queen here to defend the rook, and the queen will be defended by the knight. In which case, can we probably trade and then play f5 to 
kick the knight from the square that guards c3. Because the knight is defending c3 currently. So if we play f5, we remove it by force. And then we take on c3 with check, winning the rook. Again, this move b4 played earlier. You know, b4 was played on move 7. It's move 14. So 7 moves into the future. I always kept this in mind. The fact that the bishop exerts massive pressure. And only now do I actually make use of it. Right? Because now is the perfect time. The move b4 didn't really do anything for our opponent. But he does have moderately good development. What we're going to do. Is we're going to play b6. Because the knight's kind of annoying. Putting pressure on e6. I'm going to get our bishop out to this diagonal. Um, just checking. Yeah, we can pin this knight to the rook. And just straight up attack the knight. With this. So it kind of forces king here. Because if the knight defends, we take... Rook h3 is playable. Might be the best move. But rook h3... Probably queenside castle. We get the rook on this line. I think that's probably... Well, it can't be bad, right? It can't be bad. We're up, what, a rook and three pawns. Let's not... Let's not worry too much about the position. Um, and, I mean, the dominance of the bishop pair on the long diagonals that the fianchetto gets you to is really showing I, ca I can't draw arrows okay so knight here attacks e6 but we can actually give e6 up i think yeah we can give e6 up because the king is on the other side of the file Okay, not gonna lie, I actually just missed my f7. Um, <laughs> okay, it's a good job that we're up a lot of material. It really is. <laughs> oh, I'm really making a good name for myself here. All right, whatever. We're still up a bishop and three pawns, so let's not worry. Um, you're you're always gonna make a, a mistake, some kind of oversight at some point. Like that's just inevitable. Um, fortunately, it wasn't really a game-changing one in this scenario, but certainly wasn't necessary to allow. Um, but I mean, okay, we can just shove our pawns down the board, we can hop our knight in, we can bring our bishop back at some point, but to be honest, our bishop on a1 is actually quite good. Like, it it's kind of unassailable, like nothing can really attack it, and it controls the important diagonal, which is what we care about. Uh, let's just hop the knight in, attack his bishop, obviously all trades are good trades for us. Bishop takes pawn, I'm, I don't care about that pawn, that is of no concern. Um, throwing a check. Does that do anything? Let's throw it in anyway. Maybe we go for something like this. If the king steps onto the d-file, I'm happy. And if it steps back, it relinquishes control of the knight. Maybe we can play our bishop up. Okay, so I would love to play bishop a6, but there is b5. So, I think, yeah, I think we just do this. And the king is actually in a bit of a mating net because a knight and bishop control its only escape squares. So if the knight moves to, let's say, e5 or f4, oh my god, then rook d8 is mate, rook d1, sorry, is mate, which it's essentially back rank mate. Yeah, there we go. It's essentially back rank mate because our bishop and our knight control the only escape squares. And that's checkmate. 
So, interesting game. Our opponent develops strangely, loses a pawn for no reason, loses one of his best pieces, and then he blunders a pawn but recovers okay. Misses the move f5, we mop up a bit. Then I hang an exchange, but here, you know, I'm I'm not worried about the h6 pawn because we're up a lot of material, and I want to promote my peace activity more than anything else because his king looks so weak, and without a queen it can be hard to attack a king. But the way to the king can often be through exploiting the opponent's pieces and forcing them to move to like undesirable squares. To avoid getting captured and that's what happened here and through some very interesting manner the king just runs out of squares so that is episode four of the lead chess rating climb which puts us up to 1245 rating so we're going from 1000 to 2000 if you stuck around till the end of the video then thank you very much please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll be releasing one YouTube video and two YouTube shorts every day for at least the next, the next couple of weeks. So I'd really appreciate the support only if you enjoy it, of course. Um, and as for that, have a good one guys.